Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a pear hydromel, which is a light or low ABV mead. Let's get started. So today I want to teach you how to make a pear hydromel. If you've never made one before or want to make one, here's the video for you. You're going to need the following recipe to start. You need 7 eighths of a gallon of water. You need about 1.25 pounds of honey, of whatever honey you have or want. Then we're going to be using the Lauvin EC1118. You don't have to use that yeast. It's just the one I like for lots of meads. In the secondary of uh, fermentation, we're going to use roughly about, this is about two and a half pounds of pears, which we'll chop up and take care of with all that stuff, hopefully when they ripen. Um, and that's it. That's our recipe. The, the um, equipment you need, you need a hydrometer. You of course need a glass carboy. You need something to stir with if you don't have that. You need a tube of some sort to float your hydrometer in. Maybe some scales if you are measuring things out. Um, all of that's really important, and a, a airlock and bunk, but th that's some of your equipment you might need. So I have already uh, pre-made my must. I took and made four gallons of must with my recipe, basically. So um, I mixed all that together and I poured them into a couple different carboys because this is one of four different hydromels I'm making. This is the pear hydromel. There is going to be an apple hydromel, a banana hydromel, then the last one is just a regular straight up hydromel, normal, whatever. Four different videos. In the fifth video you see, you'll see what I'm gonna call flight night, which is where we taste test all four of the hydromels um, with each other. You will see a taste test in this video of this hydromel, but if you wanna see the flight night, go check that out. So, pre-made must, all of that stuff, that's done. Step one is, is done. I've already sanitized everything. I use star sand. Good, got all that stuff out of the way. Anyways, let's take a quick gravity reading because that's our step two. After you mix your ingredients, you need to take a gravity reading to find out how alcoholic or high the ABV will be for your mead. Our starting gravity for this is 1.040. Assuming it gets to 1.000, we are looking at a 5% mead which is great, that's right underneath the hydromel range. Hydromels are generally below 7%. There's a good chance that the, or well, I know for a fact, that the pears here are going to have some sugars within them. Now, the sugars will contribute more gravity to the mead in the secondary, which will change the ABV some. It's hard to calculate that because it doesn't actually change the gravity visibly, so you have to kind of assume some things. Anyways, um, we're looking at probably at the end of this thing, a six to six and a half percent mead. Again, perfect hydromel range. Let's go ahead now and add our yeast. We've already got our gravity reading. Here's one gram of my yeast. I'm gonna pitch it right on top. I could have rehydrated it, meaning I could have added um, some water on top to wake the yeast up. I didn't have to do that, really care about doing that. One gram of yeast is enough to cover this whole brew. We are now going to take and put an airlock and a bung on top of this thing. It's gonna go through the primary fermentation. In the secondary fermentation, you will see me cut these pears up and put them into the mead. And this will, of course, add pear flavor. There's a lot of, uh, of pectin in pears, so we are gonna probably have a pretty hazy mead to deal with. You can use pectic enzyme to counteract this. I don't have any currently. Um, I've used it all, so we will use some stuff in the latter stages of this mead to clear it up. We'll talk about that. Let me put my airlock on, write down my information, because that's important, and let's let this ferment through the primary fermentation. And we're back with the pear hydromel. It has been roughly about three weeks since this started fermenting. Um, it took a little bit longer because of some temperature fluctuations in my house, but here we are. I know this is done fermenting because our current gravity is 1.000. We started at 1.040, therefore the gravity has been chewed through. It's done fermenting for now. We are now going to take and rack this into a new container, but before we do that, we're gonna add our pears that we have chopped up and frozen, and pear slices, I should say, and then we'll add the meat on top. So let me go ahead and put my pear slices on top of this. All right, I've collected everything I can out of this container. 
Of course, this one will be cleaned and all that stuff. Um, a couple of things before I cut up the pears, I did sanitize them. I rinsed them with star sand, which just kills any bad bacteria on them and then actually put them into the freezer. Um, so I did that. Uh, another thing you could do if you want to avoid this being a hazier mead because the pears are high in um, pectin, the you can use pectic enzyme before the mead starts brewing to help clear or to help fight against this clarity problem. This thing looks decently clear now, but the truth is once it goes through secondary fermentation, which is the stage it's in now, and the pears are in there for a little bit, it's gonna be much hazier. This can be combated in a later stage, but you can fight it earlier by using pectic enzyme. Um, so Anyways, let me go ahead now and let these sit for two weeks to impart the pear flavoring, and then we'll come back and we'll do some extra things. And we're back with the pear hydromel. It has been quite some time since we added the pears. Uh, it has been about three weeks, actually, and um, I think that's been plenty of time for the pear flavor to impart. You can tell it's semi-clear, a little hazy, honestly a little clearer than I thought it would be. Now, let's for sure make sure it's done by doing a gravity reading real fast. Okay, so the gravity is currently at 1.000. We started at 1.040. Did the pears add some gravity to this ultimately? Yes. Is that completely measurable? Not necessarily. So there's a great chance that this thing has gone up by let's say 0 0.005 or 0.010, but because there was no direct sugars added, the, the yeast kind of ate the sugars out of the mead, or out of the pears, I should say, there is no way to figure that out exactly. Or there is, it's just more complex than I want to go. We are going to now take and rack this into a new container. We're going to put a piece of cheesecloth on the bottom of the uh, auto siphon so it catches all of the little bits that we don't want in the mead. racked it over. Um, now our next step is going to be to do a taste test, see where it's at after the pears. I will say I'm very surprised by the clarity on this thing. It's surprisingly clear. The last time I did a pear mead, it did not clear for a very long time. It was very stubborn, but this one surprisingly clear. Oh yeah. I can tell it's um, pear. It's got some um, very bright um, floral notes, but the bright fruity notes that you get from a pear, but also I'm getting some like citrusiness. Yeah, hmm. It needs sweetness. I think sweetness will pronounce the pear flavor. The problem is right now, it tastes like um, an unsweet pear. Well, lightly. It's not super pear tasting, it's just a light pear taste. It's pretty, it's okay. It, it needs some back sweetening. So now we're gonna back sweeten this thing. We are using erythritol. Erythritol is a natural but non-fermentable sugar that we can add. Yeast will not eat this, meaning that we are safe to back sweeten knowing that there will be no re-fermentation on it. We can go as sweet as we want. So I'm going to add in my bucket, my bottling bucket here, I'm gonna add tablespoons until I feel like it gets to the point that I want it to be. So let me go ahead and mix this thing up. All right, eight tablespoons of erythritol later, which is a fair amount to be fair, to be honest. Um, let's taste it. Definitely brightened it up. The nose itself has a pear-esque smell. It has a, a nice aroma to it that um, is not, well, knowing that it's pear, I can definitely pronounce it. I'm not sure that people are gonna be, be able to pronounce the pear flavor, uh, without knowing what it is. So I think the result for that would have been using more pear. I only used about four or five pears and I probably could have doubled that. My problem was space and how much you lose. So in reality, I think I would have doubled the pear flavor. I have a fix for this, but I don't necessarily know if I want to use it. It's a natural uh, or a brewer's best natural pear flavoring. I'm not sure if I want to go that route. I kind of want to leave this as it is. Now we're going to take and we're going to uh, not back sweet, but we're going to use a priming sugar so that we can bottle carbonate this thing. Here's what's tricky. I'm using honey. Honey is 
uh, you gotta do some math to use it as priming sugar. I am going, based off of a calculator that I found online that converts priming sugar, your standard priming sugar, to various other things, like molasses, like whatever else. So, according to my table that I've used, I need 1.07 uh, ounces, excuse me, grams, no, 1.07 ounces of the um, honey to be my priming sugar. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna transfer a little bit of this mead into this container. We are going to add 1.07 ounces of honey, specifically clover honey, to this thing so that it will have some priming sugar, which will be feasted upon by the yeast and turned into carbonation in the bottle, AKA bottle carbonation. So let me go ahead and add all of my honey to this mixture. bottling it and we have a grand total of five beer bottles and I will show the label right here for what it looks like and this is a don't know what size to be honest with you a little less than 750 and this is a little more than a beer bottle um, a fair amount of mead of course that's my label and I did have enough for a gravity reading so the current gravity of course after the erythritol and the honey is one point it is 1.010 so this should be well i should have taken a gravity reading after the erythritol but i didn't kind of fail on my part this should bottle carbonate at this point it will take about two weeks and then we'll get together well i'm going to do a taste test individually on this um, mead and tell you how it tastes and then of course you can go check out the flight night video where i am tasting all four of the hydromels that i made with some friends it should be a good time so let's let this go ahead and bottle carbonate over the next couple weeks and come back all right and here we are for the tasting it's been roughly three and a half weeks since we uh, put the priming sugar the honey in and uh, it's had some more time to mellow and all those things it's cold and this is, of course, I'm calling this the Bonkers Barb. Each one of these of my Hydromel series has Barb or Barbarian in it in some form or fashion. So let's see if we have any carbonation. Ooh, there we go. That was just, it wasn't a huge hiss, but that's also a good thing. There's no, obviously no bottle bombs. We don't want that. Um, let me go ahead and pour this in front of the camera so you can see what it looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and pour this, this glass. Well, let me see. There we go, there's that carbonation we talked about. It's nice, nice color. I do like the color on it. It's a little bit gold, a little bit yellow. Definitely still has that honey color with it. A little bit of that light yellow pear. And of course, the carbonation. Let's taste it now. It's very clear, which is nice. Um, ooh, it has a nice aroma to it. You do get the actual honey aroma, or honey, yeah, character on the aroma. Very refreshing, super summery. I can already tell this is definitely gonna be a summer drink. Um, well, I mean, anything could be a summer drink, but this one's especially. Not a ton of pear aroma. There's a, some fruitiness, but I would not identify it as pear. Now we taste it. Oh man. Wow, this thing has a very full body. Um, it, is, it is definitely fruity. <clears throat> like I just said, there is a little bit of that kind of pear essence, but I do get just a, well, that's not true. It's, as it sits more, I get like the end taste of a pear. And this thing's so refreshing. The carbonation is perfect. And it's cold, of course. We're at like 6.7, almost 7% ABV. So we're still in the hydromel range. Yeah, the, it's definitely, like it's the perfect sweetness for me. It's not too sweet. It's got like a cider-esque side to it. But because there's the honey in there, it has this warmth that you don't normally get with ciders. Ciders can be kind of sharp and just bright. This has bright for fruity notes and warmth from the honey um, itself. So far, of all the ones I've tasted, I'm just, this one is, is up there as the favorite. I still have a, um, another one to taste, but this is fantastic. I wanna make a huge batch of this. Pear is a little bit hard to control, but I think that the pear character um, shines more over time with this one. It's not super pear 
forward, meaning that when I smelled it, I wasn't like, oh, that's pears. Or when I first tasted it, I wasn't like, oh, that's pears. But as I, I actually let it sit for a second and breathe, I am getting the pear essence, that flavor, the fruitiness, the, the more bright notes of the fruit. It's really good. Highly, I highly recommend to make this one. Make it in a bigger scale or just a one gallon. I hope you've enjoyed the pear hydromel. This thing has been fantastic and I'm super pleased with it. Um, I have three other hydromels that I've made, an apple, a banana, and a traditional. Those are all in the same series, this hydromel series. And then I have a flight night video where I um, share these meads with my friends and we just kind of taste test them and, and have some fun. So go check out those videos and I hope you will uh, hit like and subscribe and do all those things. But most importantly, Go make a mead, go make this mead if you'd like. The recipe is down below. Um, I'll be back with some more content and I'm excited to make more of this in the future. So have a good day. Cheers.